I don't just love this book. It's deeply imprinted on my heart forever. Hi guys, how are you all? I'm back with yet another video and this time I came up with the controversial book The House in Cerulean Sea and I'm going to tell you about my review of this book and uh, why this book fell into this controversy recently and yeah I read few articles on uh, Google I came up with this brief form of what and why of this controversy so just stay here and hear me so firstly I will tell you about my review of this book The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klum I have been so excited to read this book from a long 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 time and look at my luck the day I started this book there's this post on Instagram and there's this whole like caption which is stated that this book is turned into a feel good fantasy about some genocide in Canada and I was shocked and my whole excitement was gone and then I put it down and for like whole day I was thinking like padhun nahi padhun padhun nahi padhun and then I came up with mujhe padhna hai I have to like form my own opinion I have to form my own review and I was totally unaware of this genocide or this Canadian residential schools or everything I was totally unaware of this before that post so I decided to read it and guess what now in a mini second and blindly I can say that I love this book utterly truly completely i just love this book and i will recommend this to everyone i even recommended this to everyone on bookstagram or my friends who reads so i'm just gonna tell you why i love this book and then i will tell you the controversy my review is it's brilliant brilliant it will give you every feeling it will make you laugh it will make you feel joy it will make you feel pain it will belong you more to your family. It will tell you the meaning of solitude and loneliness, the difference between solitude and loneliness. It will tell you how you live by rules and regulations in your life and how if you don't, what impact it leaves on your life. Like it's combinedly everything. It just covers everything at once in these 380 or 390 pages. The House in the Cerulean Sea. This uh, book has so covered so many genres. It covers contemporary fiction, fantasy fiction, gay fiction, LGBTQ and so many things. And obviously this book contains it all. And TJ Klune, he is an American writer and he is known for writing LGBTQ stories. So reading this book in Pride Month was also my like choice. The LGBTQ part is so little in the end or somewhere in between but still this book is a hit and it's like here forever forever now what this book is about it's about a magical students how magical students which are abnormal according to them they are not like normal people and that's why they are just placed into some orphanage away from the normal people's area and Linus Baker, a government supervisor who goes into these kind of orphanages and prepare a report whether these orphanages should run or whether they should shut down. He just gives the report whether the head of that orphanage is treating the kids right or not and whether those magical kids are like feeling good living there. So this book just revolves around this. The protagonist is Linus Baker, the supervisor. Now Linus character, he is he just lives by rules and regulations only rules and regulations in his work there's a manual of rules and regulations but in his life in his personal life he has his own certain rules and regulations so he just lived by them he, he lives alone with a cat and he is a bit grumpy he loves solitude he don't want to get involved in like anything and he has a fixed routine like totally fixed in a frame he wake up, he go to work, he eat, he this, uh, listen to music, he wears his pajama and he sleeps. That's his life only. Now, Linus is so honest and so quiet and he has been working in his department for 17 years. Now, he got a call from extremely upper management. Like in the department he currently works is department in charge of magical youth. 
बट ही इज ही गेट अ कॉल फ्रॉम एक्सट्रीमली अपर मैनेजमेंट मैनेजमेंट अब हिज ओन डिपार्टमेंट ही वेंट दे आर स्केयर्ड एंड फियर्ड एंड लाइक वॉट हैप वॉट विल हैपन ही विल बी फायर्ड और थिंकिंग ऑल दी नेगेटिव थिंग्स बट गेस वॉट ही गॉट एन ऑफर टू गो टू एन ऑर्फनेज एंड प्रजेंट अ रिपोर्ट Now, what's different about this orphanage? That it's situated on an island, and uh, it's so mysterious. Mm-hmm. People are unaware of its existence. So, Linus goes there, and he is like so uh, confident on himself that he will go there. He will present his report like he has been doing for past seventeen years. But his life takes a flip, takes a turn. It just changed. when he went there and meet the kids and the head and the kids okay those magical youths those kids everyone is different everyone has their own speciality the magic i was living in the fantasy i just wanted to jump in the book and go meet those kids like in person i so badly wanted that but obviously it's a book i can't do that and uh, the story the whole story which started after linus went to the island just got more fascinating and linus like there was a change in his personality he start seeing things which he earlier used to ignore or think like it doesn't fall in his rules and regulations category he just went along with it he just flowed with what was right in front of his eyes and in the end it's a happy ending but after all the twist and ch- turns after churning your heart with pain it ends on a good note there was kindness there was love there was affection there was care there was kids there was cuteness and everything literally everything and this book taught me to like see people for who they are not for what they are and just like them for who they are don't want them to be some or something i want them to be it just taught me so many things and after finishing this book i was like aur padhni hai aur badho padhni badho i was not like willing to finish this i was not willing to come out of that story i was not willing to leave that island and uh, it's just awesome book i will highly 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 recommend this and now i'm going to tell you about the controversy why it came into don- that controversy and why it's compared with that canadian genocide of indigenous people so as i told you it's been said that this book is based on some historical incident of indigenous genocide in canada and uh, this is turned into a feel good fantasy and it would have been better to just turn into a historical fiction and just mentioning the horrifying incidents of that genocide but it's turned into a feel good fantasy which was not appreciated as much now what happened in canada indigenous people or native people or first nation people lived uh, outside the town area or the city area and they have their own language their own culture and traditions native culture so the government initiated cultural assimilation and it was conducted by catholics and protestant churches they built up residential schools and like took kids away from their families in native families and transported them into that boarding school what are these residential schools now native people are linked with their land spirituality or communal belonging or anything and traditions and cultures in their families is forwarded by family elders through stories through like parents and grandparents so what christians did they took kids away from their families and transported them into boarding school so the link between tradition and culture should get break, broken they admitted them into residential school intentionally those schools were built far and far away from their home so that even if children try to escape that they couldn't reach their families so it was like even if families try not to send their children to those schools or even if tra- try to bring their children back from that school they couldn't what was taught in those residential schools they were told to wear european style clothing they were banned from speaking their native language and were told to speak english they were uh, like forced to read bible they were just forced to 
accumulate Christian culture and forget everything about their native culture. This was horrifying, terrible act on humanity and everything. And kids were forcefully snatched away from their families and like admitted in that schools. There were kids of three years, five years, seven years. So why this book is uh, said to be based on that? Because here magical beings are admitted into orphanages and it's said that they also were snatched away from their family. Like they are not living with their parents. They are living in orphanages even when they have parents or they are somewhere else because they are abnormal. So I, I won't put my personal opinion here. I loved the book that's a separate thing but this incident is a separate thing and i just don't link these two i am just telling you so you all should be aware about what this is and why this book is linked with that genocide girls were abused and raped and so many young girls become pregnant and kids born from them were killed children were to shave their heads or if not then they have to cut their traditional or signature style or uh, which their family or native family is carrying out from years over the time of running of residential schools unlike 50,000 children were admitted into that and among them at least 3,000 to 6,000 died killed died or whatever and those who just escaped somehow or who managed to survive they are suffering from PTSD post traumatic stress disorder and the last residential school closed in 1996 it's not like long way back it's just there and and finding that mass grave recently with the remains of 215 children was so horrifying and it just brought back all the trauma of that time so this is what 60s scoop is and this is why tj clune is said to turn this horrifying incident into a feel-good fantasy but uh, i don't feel that because read the book and just base your own opinion because there are magical beings there's orphanage and those children in this book are not abused are not tortured are not like beaten up but uh, still this is the controversy i just want to tell it out to all the people out there because i had this feeling like i'm loving the book am i not too sorry or sympathetic towards that incident am i not feeling bad for that incident but no that's like separate thing and this book is separate thing i love the book i still stand by that point and this genocide was brutal cruel and inhumane but still i don't link those two and this is this also i watched n with an e on netflix and uh, it's also an adaptation from uh, the book that show is based on canada so in that show there's mention of this indigenous people and uh, there's this kid she went to school like willingly and then she realized and came across the reality of residential schools she somehow managed to escape from that she even reached her parents but but then she was again snatched away from them and even after her parents went to that school and tried to like take her out from the school it was impossible and so yeah i guess that's it i explained it all as far as i know and um, i love the book and i would recommend this because it will make you feel so good and so different it will just show you different colors of different personalities in just single book so it's a good read it's a like get lost in the book world book and uh, just read it now you know about the controversy too so just uh, read it without having any like guilt or regret of anything so yeah that's it and uh, till then keep reading be happy be safe bye bye